Hi, um, my name is Dr. Kazi Javed. Um, welcome back. We are continuing our conversation where we left it off last time. Uh, we are talking about um, pans and pandas. And uh, today we have with us um, our great physician assistant, uh, Ms. Sarah Klopp. Um, and uh, she is also in our clinic and is involved um, in taking care of uh, some of the patients that we see. So she tends to work with families also. I will let her introduce herself. Hi, yes, hello. My name is Sarah Klopp. I am a PA, physician assistant. Happy to be here with our team at Integrative Psychiatry Austin. Uh, one of the things, Sarah, that I um, hear the most is, um, you know, when people ask, how is this, how is this caused? You know, when you're looking for those triggers, um, you think about infections is one of the first things you think about. And what happens there is what's called uh, molecular mimicry where, for example, an infection with streptococcal bacteria, that bacteria has been around a long time. It tries to hide itself um, from your immune system in the body. So it forms these little molecules um, that your body then responds to and, and attacks these molecules or wants to attack these molecules. And we have molecules in the body that look similar, um, for example, in the brain. And so after some sort of infection, strep, it could be a virus, you know, flu, mono, mycoplasma, um, those are some examples. Your immune system overreacts uh, to that infection and basically the body attacks itself. Um, and it's kind of an inflammatory condition as well. And so then you start to see the manifestations, um, especially with the brain affecting the, the basal ganglia of the brain. How is the basal ganglia uh, important? And what kind of things can you, can you expect if the basal ganglia are involved in inflammation or are on fire? So you can see fairly abrupt or kind of acute, you know, quick changes in your child's um, mood and emotions, you know, outbursts, um, behavior, maybe, you know, being more kind of defiant, you know, something that comes on so suddenly and it just can't really be explained or it's just more extreme type mood changes and mood swings, um, changes with their learning, you know, as far as how well they're doing in, in class and school. Um, anxiety, depression, um, OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, um, having kind of obsessive thoughts, maybe um, certain rituals and things they're needing to do to be comfortable. Um, there can be some kind of what we call tics or some like motor movement type changes. Um, sensory, sometimes there's changes with their eating. They all of a sudden don't like textures of foods or, or won't eat um, very well. So, you know, you'll see it, as you can see, it can be a lot of different things you could see. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's quite a challenge, you know, living with, living with all of these. And we see a lot of uh, these families and these children in a lot of distress. Um, one of the questions that a lot of the families have uh, is uh, you know and i've talked a little bit about it earlier also about diagnosis right? like how do we how do we diagnose it and it's a it's a difficult condition to uh, diagnose but if if somebody came to you and they were um and you had to do some investigations and lab investigations and what kind of things would you be would you be looking for in the in the blood in the labs yeah, so we so we can, you know, do laboratory studies, you know, a blood draw and look at look at lab work where we would check for, you know, infections, evidence of infections. Like we were saying earlier, you know, looking for um, Epstein-Barr, mono, you know, prior influenza exposure, which is the flu, um, again, streptococcal um, bacteria, 
looking looking at numbers there. Uh, we also look at the nutritional status, checking like, for example, B12, vitamin D, um, those things are important. Um, also, you can look for evidence of inflammation because this is also kind of an inflammatory disorder. Um, and so there's markers you can check there. Um, and then we also look at just kind of the general health of our patients. So looking at kidney, liver function, um, what's called a blood count. So checking all of of that to see to see what we're what we're finding there. Um, and once once we get all of the all of the investigations, then um, we we move on to um, treatment. And uh, treatment usually I like to think of treatment as a as a, a three pronged approach. Right? Like there's this. Um, there's this antimicrobial um, treatment that we that we do, um, and then there's this um, we we treat the immune system, uh, which is dysregulated, and then we treat the psychological or psychiatric kind of uh, symptoms that um, that can be present. Um, right. So. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, each one of them and how how that can some of the things that you that we do in the clinic that that you see? Right, yeah. right. So, like you said, we'll address all of those areas. Those are all important um, to address the big picture, right? All of it. So, the immune system um, using things to kind of modulate or kind of calm down the immune system, help it function um, in a more proper way. So anti-inflammatories, um, something called IVIG, um, you can think about steroids. And, you know, you do want to address the, the mental health um, changes and concerns. So again, there's lots of ways we can address that. Um, but, you know, that can include prescription type medications to try and help with the symptoms of OCD, anxiety, depression, uh, amongst other ways we can address those concerns. And with the infections, we'll use, like you said, antimicrobials. So that could be antibiotics, antivirals, uh, medications that fight off like parasites even, um, antifungals. And these things can include, again, prescription type medication, or we also work with, you know, herbs and supplements. So um, it is that multifaceted approach, you know, where you want to address all those areas. And it's really, um, and uh, it's really interesting. And one of the things that we want to do is to um, continue uh, our conversation with some of the other people in our team um, because as you said, we can use herbs to, uh, I mean, there are herbs that have antimicrobial effect, you know, right. there are herbs that have antifungal effect. Um, they have, there are herbs that have antiviral effect and, um, and similarly there are immune modulating herbs, right? Like mushrooms and some of the other, um, uh, some of the other plants. Um, so with all of this, um, we are able to um, customize a treatment plan and um, uh, thank you very much Sarah for, for, for being here and telling thank us you. about what you do and we're going to continue our series and um, we're going to talk to um, our nutritionist also next and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about functional medicine and then after that we're going to continue our conversations with our herbalist and our psychologist so um, we look forward to that uh, conversation thank you very much for being here thank you thank you so much glad to be part of the team <laughs>